this is Ken from the Computer Clan here today with an exciting demo of a brand new version of OS X that was introduced at WWDC 2014. That is OS 10.10 Yosemite. Yosemite has a lot of new features, app updates, and something new called continuity, which we will talk about a bit, but a big thing that you will notice right away is the brand new user interface. It is a lot more like iOS 7, but it still has a bit of depth to it, so it's kind of in between the original Mavericks look with Aqua and the iOS 7 look we know today. So let's take a look at a few things with the interface. For example, if we have a finder window here, you will notice the sidebar shows the colors through this frosted glass look. So your wallpaper will actually soak through this frosted glass, and as you move the window around, you will see that the colors change. Same thing with the dock. If I have some other window that I drag down there, you will see that the frosted glass really reflects those colors nicely through the nice frosty filter there. It's the same thing with menus. All of their colors adapt to what you have lying beneath them with their transparency. And toolbars also show content through the frosted glass look. As you scroll, you can see the contents flow beneath the toolbar and they are shown with this nice blurry look there. So that's a really nice change. So overall, the interface is a lot more dynamic and personal. For example, let's say I change my wallpaper. You can see the new colors of the wallpaper are soaking through the menu bar, the dock, the sidebars, and it looks really beautiful. See, now the menus kind of look green. If I set it to another photograph that I took here, it's a nice photo. You can see now everything has more of a blue and purple kind of hue to it. If we look at some of the applications, you will see that some of them have a couple interface tweaks in addition to the new Yosemite theme, but overall the muscle memory is the same. It's the same, but different. Although it looks new, it still functions the same way. Everything looks good. I can just click and use the app like I normally would. Even though it has this nice new appearance, I don't have to really relearn any of the applications. Here's what the new Mission Control view looks like. It blurs out the background. I can still drag windows into their own virtual desktops if I choose. And there are some nice changes to the calendar interface. For example, what you would do earlier is you could use popovers and inspector windows to manage and view information about events. But you can now go to this day view and it shows this new sidebar. So let's say, let me go to my month view and choose a day. Maybe this event is important. So, ah, here's something, meeting with divorce attorney. Oh boy, that sounds fun. So I can view more information here efficiently. I can scrub through my days up here. I can click on an event. And I can even add locations like in Mavericks, but now I have this nice new view to look at them. So Moscone Center. Yep, that looks like it's it. It'll show me the nice map right here. It'll even tell me the temperature. So that's pretty good. So the new interface is really exciting, it's fresh and new, but what about features? There's tons of features in Yosemite, so let's take a look. For starters, Spotlight. Spotlight is that awesome feature that's been around since Tiger. It can search files on your computer, it can search dictionary definitions, it can be used as a calculator, it can search the web. It's really nice. But now it can search even more content, and it has a nice new interface. So if I click the magnifying glass or press command space, it's now front and centered. It's no longer up in the corner here. It's front and centered. So let's say I type in an application name, DI for disk utility, or DIS, right there. Just You can just type in a few letters, QuickTime Player, you know, Safari, just a couple letters, and you can use it as an app launcher like before. So you can still use that for quick launching applications. It also still works as a dictionary. So for example, if we type in a complicated word like pragmatic, if I even spelt that right. Yep, I can get definitions right here without even having to leave Spotlight. I don't need to open up another application. It's all right here. I can even look at information on Wikipedia. I can still search files like maybe I got in a... <laughs> yeah, I got some divorce attorney forms. That looks great. I can preview it right here. I can open it. I can look at other files here my calendars. So let's say there's other information I need to look up, like the Moscone Center. I was looking at going there for the Worldwide Developer Conference. I can search the information right here. I can get contact information, the website, the map, all without leaving Spotlight. It also works for movies. So let's say I want to look at the Lego movie. All right, there is a theater nearby that's playing it at these times. I can look at the ratings, the trailers. 
without even using other applications. I can even get to it from iTunes if I want to. So it's right here. I could stream it right from the iTunes store. I can go download it and play it. And Spotlight still functions as a calculator, you know, five to the 57th power. That's a big, big number. Contacts, Gordon Freeman, Walter White, it all just shows up. I can call them right from here. Don't even need to use other apps. So a lot of time saving with Spotlight. Very, very efficient. Front and center looks beautiful. Let's take a look at the notification center. As you can see, it has been redesigned to look more like iOS 7. And you can even throw widgets in here, third-party widgets as well. So I have some clocks, some weather information, my stocks, calculator. And if I had any notifications, they would show up in this tab as well. And I can go edit this and add in other third-party widgets and rearrange them. I can remove them. Let's say I don't want reminders. I could zap that and I can add it back later if I want. I can also just drag these around and rearrange them. So really efficient. I can hit done and I'm done and close that for now. So new notification center, more information at a glance. Safari has some nice changes. The toolbar is now all unified. So if I went to, let's say this here and I scroll, as you can see, you get that nice new frosted glass look. But as you can see, it's a lot thinner. There's not a separate part of the window border for the title or a separate part for the bookmarks bar. It's all unified into one convenient bar. However, you can still get to your bookmarks bar if you so choose under the view menu there but I like to hide that because it just saves more space and if you go to a default page here you can see you have your favorites now in this nice grid kind of like an iOS 7 but if you want you can still get to that awesome top sites view so don't worry that is still built in your sidebar is also here so you can look at your reading lists your shared links you can even subscribe to RSS feeds now that used to be an OS 10, it got killed off, but now it's back and you can subscribe right inside of Safari here. It's also quite a bit faster under the hood. It's better with JavaScript. It has premium HTML5 support. So for example, if I was on the Netflix website, I can stream content without using Silverlight and I can get better performance and battery life with that. So that's really handy. You can now open up separate private windows. Safari was the first browser to introduce private browsing mode, but it was either all or nothing. It was either on or off, but now I can just open up separate private browsing windows. The last thing I'd like to talk about is tabs. So let's say I open up just a bunch of websites. I'm just going nuts. Actually, I'll close Yahoo. I don't want them right now. I'll go Google, Twitter, Facebook, Wikipedia, LinkedIn, the Weather Channel, Yelp, you know. Okay, so I'm browsing like crazy. Look at these tabs. I can now scroll through them. So that's really efficient. I can still control tab them if I want to. Just click, switch around, very nice. So let's say I wanna get a bird's eye view of everything that's going on. Let's say I even have more web pages open. I have a lot of tabs. I can click at this little square right here that says show all tabs, click it, and I immediately get brought to this nice grid view of everything that I'm doing on Safari. And Safari will even group tabs that are from the same website into this stack right here. So these four web pages are all from our Computer Clan website. The new version of Safari, faster, more browsing space, new tabs view, overall, very nice update. Let's take a look at messages. Messages not only looks very beautiful with that new frosted glass look, but there's some nice other changes. So as you can see, I'm talking with Johnny Hive here about <laughs> making uh, the next version of OS X have an aluminum dock or something. And we have this nice new feature called Soundbite. So I could still type a message like, hello, if it actually typed, let's try that again. Hello, hello. <laughs> so I can still type a message if I want, but I can record a little sound message and send it to him. Yo, Johnny Hive, I know Scott Fullstall was calling us, telling us to make the next dock out of leather, and I know you wanted it made out of aluminum, but we just did a frosted glass look, so we didn't listen to any of you. Is that okay? So we stopped that. I could send that to him, but I won't. That'll probably piss him off. But that is in there. That's really handy. There's also this nice new addition to the details panel here. I can get instant access to all the attachments that are shared, like that lovely OS X weed joke. I can even hit do not disturb for individual threads. So if I want to be notified about the Muffin Man conversation and all these other things, I can do that. But if I don't want to be notified from Johnny Hive, I can just hit do not disturb and it puts the little moon there. So all these other conversations are still fine, but his will be muted with the new do not disturb function. In addition, in Mavericks and other versions of OS X that had iMessage support, all these messages can run from the iMessage service Apple has as part of iCloud. Now, if someone texted you from a non-iOS or Mac device, 
it would use the SMS protocol. And those messages wouldn't show up. But with the new updates to Yosemite, you can actually receive SMS messages through your phone and they will send them to your Mac as part of the new continuity features. A lot of those functions do not work right now in the developer preview, but they are going to be in there. So that's really handy. You can even make phone calls directly from OS X Yosemite and you can receive phone calls as well and use your Mac as a speakerphone. I'd like to talk a little bit about sharing. So let's say I was on our Computer Clan website and I wanted to share this with someone. I could still do AirDrop, Twitter, messages, all that great stuff, but there's this more option. And Yosemite makes it easier for expansion for extensions for services like sharing. So just like in the old Macintosh systems, we now have an extensions panel in system preferences, actions, the notification center information, third-party extensions, share menu items, I can control them all from here now. So let's say I don't use LinkedIn, maybe I don't use Flickr, I'll probably never use Yuku or whatever this is. So now when I go to my share options, it's a lot less cluttered. I only get the options that I care about. So I can manage those right inside of system preferences. And that's system-wide, so super handy. Speaking of AirDrop, Let's say I go to the AirDrop panel here, and AirDrop is a really nice way to easily share files with people, but on OS X, you could only share files from Mac to Mac. You also have other devices like an iPhone or an iPad, perhaps, and you want to get files on there. Well, now you can go across the platform. So if I turn AirDrop on on my phone here, you will see my phone shows up. Let's say I want to put a picture on there. I'll just drag it on top, and I can now share files directly to my iOS devices across the platforms from the Finder. iCloud has had some nice updates in Yosemite. So, for example, I can click this iCloud button in the sidebar here, and iCloud will show me all of my folders that relate to applications that save iCloud documents. So, before I had to open up individual applications to get to the iCloud open panel to view my documents, but now I can view everything I use with iCloud right inside of the Finder, all of my documents. And part of this iCloud Drive functionality includes manual file uploads. I don't need to have some specific document saved through an iCloud-enabled application to get it on the cloud. For example, if I wanted to take this picture, I can just drag it right in here and have it go onto iCloud, and it will show up on any of my other iCloud-capable devices. So in addition to those convenient iCloud automatic syncing features, you can now use it as a manual Dropbox, just like the old Apple iDisk. <laughs> Remember that thing? So let's say I was browsing Pages documents here. I can open up Pages and the document right from within the Finder panel. So peers are cool. Yes, they are. Robert Jennings, don't know who that is. So yes, all of that works seamlessly. And I'd also like you to note, this application hasn't been designed for Yosemite. This is directly from the App Store. This is the version of Pages you can get currently. But as you can see, the toolbar has the Yosemite theme. Even the other buttons have the nice Yosemite theme to them. So standard controls for applications automatically update for the Yosemite look. Custom controls will need to be changed, but for the most part, the standard controls will look like Yosemite without having to change your application. This next feature has to do with iOS screen recording. There have been some solutions to this prior, but now there's a really handy built-in one with iOS 8 and Yosemite. If you plug in your iOS device, Yosemite will actually recognize it as a camera. So if I went to a new movie recording, for example, and I set my device here to my iPhone, which it already is, I can actually look at my iOS device right through QuickTime, for example, and I can record any of the information from the screen right into a movie file. And it also works with audio. So this is really handy if you're doing a review for an app or if you need to get some screen recording done for your app and put the video preview on the App Store, which is now supported. So that is really convenient. And it's a little flickery during this uh, demo here, but it's beta software. It does work, though. <laughs> it does work. So that's a quick look at some of the nice changes in OS 10.10 Yosemite. There's plenty of other features that are still being worked on, such as the continuity features, which help bring your devices closer together with productivity. It's really handy. Now, I would just like to go over a couple of questions I know I'm going to receive. Some people are probably going to ask, how can I get Yosemite? Well, if you're a developer, you can already get your hands on it. But what Apple is doing is they're going to have a public beta. 
So throughout the summer, you can actually test drive it. So you can register for public betas. Apple.com slash OS 10 slash previews, and there's a learn more button at the bottom of the screen. And now for the rest of us, it will be available in fall as part of a free upgrade. And it is compatible with a lot of Macs. I believe it's even compatible with some Macs dating back to 2007. So the compatibility is there. Another question I bet I will receive is in regards to the dashboard. Because as you saw, there's widgets right here that are pretty handy. So is the dashboard still there? Yes, it is, but it's off by default. However, if you open up the mission control settings, you can enable the dashboard right from there. Another quick thing I want to cover has to do with the zoom button. Now, I'm sure a lot of people don't even care about the zoom button, but just in case, this green button used to be the zoom button in OS X. However, when you click it, it's now the full screen button. So you're probably wondering, if you even care, how do you get to the zoom functionality? You can still get to it from the window, but if you hold down the option key, the full screen arrows turn into the plus sign. So that is still in there. I hope you enjoyed this demo of OS X Yosemite. Let us know what you think about the new system. Comment below and let us know. We're curious to hear your opinions. And if you have any questions about Yosemite, feel free to ask. We're here to answer your questions. If you ask, we'll do our best to answer and help you out. So thanks for tuning into this demo, and we will see you next time. Revision is the Computer Clan's upcoming largest and most complex film to date. Fund it now on Indiegogo to help make this incredible film come to life. If you do choose to back this project, we promise you, you will not regret it.